You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, speaking, speaking of the orange one, uh, this fool spoke to the International Association of Police Chiefs today uh, in Chicago, and all he did was trash the Windy City. But there is one person that's not here today. We're in Chicago. I said, where is he? I want to talk to him. In fact, more than anyone else, this person should be here because maybe he could learn something. And that's the superintendent of Chicago Police, Eddie Johnson. A few days ago, Johnson said, quote, the values of the people of Chicago are more important than anything President Trump would have to say. I don't think so. Because that's a very insulting statement. After all I've done for the police, and I've done more than any other president's ever done for the police. Over a hundred years, we can prove it, but probably from the beginning. And here's a man that could not bother to show up for a meeting of police chiefs, most respected people in the country, in his hometown, and with the President of the United States. And you know why? It's because he's not doing his job. Last year, 565 people were murdered in Chicago. Since Eddie Johnson has been police chief, more than 1,500 people have been murdered in Chicago, and 13,067 people have been shot. During the first weekend of August 2019, seven people were murdered, and 52 were wounded in 32 shootings in Chicago. And recently, they had 78 shootings over a weekend spree, and three people killed. And Chicago has the toughest gun laws in the United States. That doesn't seem to be working too well, does it? And a lot of you people know exactly what I mean. But under Johnson's leadership, they certainly don't protect people. Then you have the case of this wise guy, Jesse Smollett, who beat up himself. <laughs> and he said MAGA country did it. MAGA country. Okay? He said MAGA, that's a hate crime. That's a hate crime. And it's a scam. It's a real big scam. Just like the impeachment of your president is a scam. And then you look what's going on. Smollett is still trying to get away with it. He would have been better off if he paid his $100,000 bill. Chicago is, unfortunately, the worst sanctuary city in America. Chicago protects criminals at a level few could even imagine. Last year in Cook County alone, ICE asked local law enforcement people to please, pretty please, we beg you, we'll do anything necessary to stop crime. We want to stop crime. Please detain 1,162 people, please. But in each case, the detainer was denied. And Eddie Johnson wants to talk about values. No. People like Johnson put criminals and illegal aliens before the citizens of Chicago, and those are his values, and frankly, those values to me are a disgrace. I will never put the needs of illegal criminals before I put the needs of law-abiding citizens. It's very simple to me.
So when Eddie Johnson and many other people from lots of other regions and areas support sanctuary cities, it's really, in my opinion, a betrayal of their oath to the shield and a violation of his duty to serve and to protect the courageous police officers of Chicago. And I know some of them, and they're the most incredible people. They could solve this problem quickly. It's embarrassing to us as a nation all over the world. They're talking about Chicago. Afghanistan is a safe place by comparison. It's true. Police officers of Chicago are entitled to a police superintendent who has their backs and knows what he's doing. You're entitled to a police superintendent who sides with you, with the people of Chicago. The people want this. And with the families of Chicago, not the criminals and the gang members that are here illegally, and not the stupid politicians that have no idea what the hell they're doing. Now, Donald Trump also spoke about consent decrees. Here's what he said. Administration has also curtailed the harmful and intrusive use of federal consent decrees, which wrongly give meddlesome officials in Washington, D.C., immense authority to tie down local police departments and make it very difficult to do their work. No longer will federal bureaucrats micromanage your local police. And we will work with, upon request, local police to help them, not to hinder them. And we're waiting for a call from Chicago, because there's no place that we would rather help than Chicago. Now, those of you who are watching may say, man, why don't you play all of that? I didn't play those comments so you could hear what Trump had to say. Julian, I played it so they can hear the applause. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. At the police chiefs. Mm hmm Other than guys like Art Acevedo, who's a police chief of Houston, and a few others, these police chiefs are largely white men who are walking in lockstep with Donald Trump, and when he talked about consent decrees, that was the first thing Jeff Sessions did when he came in, mm -hmm. tried to get out of the consent decree in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Then, this SOB has the nerve to talk about the police chief in, in Chicago, but guess what they tried to do? Get out of the consent decree of those same cops in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He wants thuggish cops. He wants cops but he said that, that brutalize yeah. people. Yeah. He wants cops who have no accountability, and these police chiefs are like, that's our guy, because we can. We want to do, do whatever we want with impunity. And, you know, he said this during the campaign. There was, uh, I remember, there was uh, somebody, he said that he wished the police had, uh, had basically jacked them worse. I forgot right. the exact yeah. quote, but he said, I wish they, they were jacked. He said, I wish they had jacked them worse. He has been baiting the whole time. You know, at the con criminal justice reform thing in Benedict, one of the things that we must know, this man has never apologized for his attack on a central right... Five Central Park Five. He has never apologized for that, uh, even though they've been exonerated, walked away with millions of dollars, correctly so. Never, never apologized. So he has decided law and disorder is basically the name of the game. That these police chiefs have no accountability, which means their police forces have no That's accountability. Right. Which means that when a man goes and shoots somebody playing uh, video games through their window, you know, it takes a minute for them. Now they they did the right thing by firing him, but it took a minute. When uh, there, there are just so many cases. And when you we were to talk about San Bernardino, a man puts his hands up and they shoot him anyway. So we, you know, these police chiefs have been running roughshod over citizens. And for him to stand there and attack the black man who is the police chief in Chicago is absurd. It also lets you know who he is, what he is, and what he's all about. And Roland, you were very kind to call him an SOB. I mean, we could go a little lower. No, I, I just, I mean, I look, first of all, the problem I had with, why did I say that? That's what he called NFL players. Mm-hmm. See, this is where me and me, me, Mika and Joe don't agree. See, and also Michelle Obama. See, Mika in her little, uh, Instagram post tried to invoke Michelle Obama by saying, you know, as Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. No. They go low, 
They hit you below the belt, I'm gonna hit your ass in your ankles. Because I'm sorry, the way you deal with a bully is you punch Absolutely. a bully back. Absolutely. This man wants no accountability. He has no issues he, with, with how police are acting. He never speaks against them. And he wants these rogue cops roaming the streets, doing whatever they want. And we tell that story, oh, we can quickly solve what's happening in Chicago. Oh, Chicago has tough gun laws. But he won't deal with the fact that Indiana, the line is like right across the street, and most of the guns are coming from Indiana, Mike Pence's state, where he used to be governor. Well, he's very selective in terms of his um, ability to be in favor of law enforcement. Because if you look at what he does and what he did here, he's very much in favor of law enforcement that is about using brutal force against black people. But when you look at our intelligence agencies, Oh. who are seeking to enforce the law against him and his lawlessness. He has absolutely nothing good to say about law enforcement. So I find it very interesting that he only appears to be um, praised and praising those Klan-like elements of law enforcement that really focus their efforts on brutalizing black people. But when we talk about our intelligence agencies, when we talk about those people who have spent their careers protecting this country from illegal actions, and they found him caught up in a web of activity that they found in terms of legal, and it's not just them. Right. We had that Senate bipartisan commission come, come out and say that there was proof that they also agreed that uh, Russia was involved with the previous election. So he has nothing good to say about law enforcement when it comes to his illegal activity. But when it comes to people who are sitting there spending their careers abusing black folks, he has everything good to but, say. And here was laughable Afghanistan. First of all, if he flew to Afghanistan, he couldn't say it in advance. It would have to be, it would, it would be radio silence, kept quiet. Uh, out of fear of the terrorists knowing. Mr. Bob but Spurs everybody knew that. he was flying into Chicago. Absolutely. So to sit here and act as, oh, Chicago is, is, Afghanistan is not as bad as Chicago. Mr. Bone Spurs does not have the guts to go to Afghanistan. Let's just or, be very, or, or very any place Or any place else where there's danger. I right. mean, if you look at basically his record before he became president, he was a wuss and a punk, basically, and he still was not a punk. Like, yeah. like, like when he skipped out on that rally in Chicago when the bros showed up. <laughs> but, you know, the thing <laughs> about this, Roland, he has adhered to his assertion <clears throat> that he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and get away with yep. it. Now what we know is that he can meddle with the Ukraine and uh, ask for quid pro quo and right. get away with it, that he can uh, meddle... Uh, basically closing aspects of federal agencies and get away with it, that he can defy Congress and get away with it, that they can subpoena people and he tells them don't show up. So he basically, who, and, and, and let's be clear about what this is about. Republicans have given him a pass. They've said they know what no, no, the no. law is. They give him a pass. I believe... No, no, they're not giving him a pass. They've said, no, we're going to give you the pass. And, and, well, I yeah. believe they Do are getting, you want. They, I believe they're all getting help from foreign actors, not just Donald Trump. I believe that the, 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 the Russians and perhaps other foreign countries are... Put, and we saw, we saw proof. The Ukrainians that were just, um, that were just arrested, you had several Republican congressmen and the governor of Florida come out and say, we need to give money back that they just gave mm -hmm. us. Yep. So they are buying out, off the entire GOP. What we're seeing right now is someone who is incapable of playing fair. He only hmm. knows how to win if he can tilt the situation. And that's exactly what he's tr trying to do now with the election. And that's exactly why he is at every given chance berating law enforcement that is investigating him because he knows that he doesn't have control over that situation and he knows that he is involved with illegal activity. All right, y'all. All right, folks, back to our whole mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Second annual Life Low Jazz Experience in Cabo, November 7th through the 11th. I will be there broadcasting Roller Bart Unfiltered there on that Thursday and Friday. Uh, if you want to participate, if you want to come out, it's going to be a grand time. 14 amazing acts. Go to lifeluxjazz.com. But if you cannot make it, you can still check out the live stream. You can have a guest pass, folks, $10.99, to watch all of the concerts over the course 
of three days. I'm talking about some amazing artists. That, of course, is my frat brother, Gerald Albright. Of course, we had Kirk Whalem on the show last week. He's going to be there as well. Some of the other people who are going to be in the house, actor, comedian, Mark Curry. Oh, my goodness. Donnie McClurkin, Alex Bunyan, Raul Madon, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Average White Band, Shalea, Roy Ayers, Tom Brown, Ronnie Laws, Ernest Quarles. Man, it's going to be jam-packed. If you want to get the live stream, go to GFNTV.com. That's GFNTV.com. GFNTV.com. You can watch all three days, live stream, all the concerts right here on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, just for the cost of $10.99. So we certainly want you to do that, and we look forward to the Life Lux Jazz experience there in Cabo. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. <laughs> Thank you.